data scientist, a job career choice that many of us are still making based off of an article written a decade ago. Yes, you heard me right. It's been 10 years since the article in Harvard was written, or at least I like to round up. So essentially 10 years. And yet we are all still picking data scientists as our career choice. But for some reason, when you scroll in LinkedIn, you find many people posting that they are recovering data scientists and now data engineers. My perspective is that data science often brings many of us into the fold of data, but over time we eventually figure out, you know, data science just isn't for us. And although there is some gatekeeping around data engineering, in fact, I heard someone tell me that they believe that data scientists can't be data engineers, which is kind of silly. Nonetheless, it feels like a lot of people that were once data scientists eventually move over to data engineering. The question is, why? What is the reason for this? And maybe how can we help you just skip over the whole transition from data scientist to data engineer by giving you the chance to reflect on the points I'm going to make in this video to help you understand why you should become a data engineer and not a data scientist. So here are the reasons why I believe you should maybe become a data engineer if you kind of resonate with these concepts. Point number one is you like building stuff. And I'm kind of using the word stuff on purpose just to say that you like building. You like building the infrastructure, you like building code, you like writing more object-oriented style code and not just very like almost procedural code where you're just kind of writing it to do some work on data, but instead you like kind of doing everything around it instead. Then maybe you're more of a data engineer. Data engineers do a ton of work that involves, you know, again, building data pipelines, building data infrastructure, building data monitoring, and doing a ton of stuff that maybe doesn't directly have to do with a model. Maybe sometimes we do operationalize a model or productionize a model is what you'll often hear, which just means we'll often take a lot of the research or maybe the Jupyter notebook that a data scientist put together and then implement it in some sort of sustainable and robust system rather than just again, taking this piece of code or Jupyter notebook and then clicking run every day. A Jupyter notebook is not really a data pipeline as it kind of hides away a lot of other concepts like data QA, data observability, being able to manage dependencies, being able to kind of track staging tables and things of that nature, which are all more of that stuff that I'm referencing in terms of data engineering. We like to take things in phases because it gives us the ability to take data, you know, do some sort of work on it, put it in a table, analyze it, make sure it's accurate, do some more work on it, put it in a new table, analyze it, make sure it's accurate. And this kind of discipline and process of building this infrastructure throughout the whole process, rather than just hiding it all in data frames that no one can access and no one can really properly QA is kind of, I think, a differentiator. We like kind of having that tangible final product. It's not just an analysis. We like having a thing. We like having a table. We like having a pipeline. We like having a whole data warehouse or a data lake, whatever it might be, but that's something that we enjoy. Because at the end of the day, this kind of is like a point one B, we like feeling like we're done. Data science has this kind of endless ability to have a question after a question after a question, right? You answer one question, well, now you can answer another one and your analysis is really infinite. But as a data engineer, we have a general spec that we're trying to follow, right? A table, a data pipeline, something of that nature. And once we've built it, it's kind of done, sure. Sure, our stakeholder might be like, oh, I wanted to add this column as well, but that's now either a new project or a new task. And, you know, we've already kind of finished the original project and we'll have to reprioritize this new ask. That's not always the case with data science. It can be kind of, again, this infinite complex of question after question after question, all of which might never lead to an actual answer. And again, if that's what you like your work being, having no real final product, that's fine then maybe data science is for you. But if you like kind of having a finished thing at the end of the day, data engineering might be a better solution or a better role for you in the future. Of course, there are many other benefits to being a data engineer. For example, we're not necessarily the star of the show. Data science still has a lot of this sexiness and this hype, whereas data engineers get to hide kind of in the background, which let's be real, many of us love. Like, I think this meme sums it up great. I mean, yes, that guy looks a little bit grumpy, but he's just happy that no one's pointing any questions at him. He got to build his table and now the data scientist gets to answer all the questions. So if you prefer kind of just doing your work and maybe not getting a ton of attention and a ton of questions pointed your direction, being a data engineer is kind of nice. You kind of got to do your work. And for the most part, you know, once it's finished, you can hand it over to the data scientist who now has to go talk about all these results. 
to some sort of either manager or stakeholder and you get to kind of just hide behind. Maybe they'll include you in the presentation, which is great. They might give you a little kudos for building the table, fine. But overall, you didn't do any analysis. You built the table. Maybe you had to do some cleaning to make sure it was correct and clean and ready. But overall, you can kind of hide behind the data scientist analysis. For people who prefer interacting with the keyboard versus other people, it's kind of a great position. I'm of course not saying that all data engineers are introverts or people who don't like talking at all to anyone. Trust me, you'll have the opportunity if you really want and it's there if you wanna take it. But also you can kind of hide away and just do your work and go home. No lead to lead too many meetings because most people would go to sleep if you started talking about like normalization and third normal form versus you know you talking about how you designed this one table, this style versus another way and all of these weird nuances, which would cause most people to go to bed faster than Jigglypuff singing her song. Because instead, really, the business cares about more of the data science results, like what's the money they're gonna save, like what's the maybe end model and why will it impact the business? The table itself, I mean, it's important and obviously the data scientists can't do their work without it, but at the same time, very few people wanna know how the sausage is made. They just care that the sausage is there on their plate. And for my final point, if you prefer SQL over Pandas, you might be more of a data engineer. Something that I've definitely noticed is that data scientists love Pandas, and it seems like most data engineers love SQL. Both kind of do similar work, both manipulate data in one way or another. But from my perspective, I almost like to poke at my girlfriend who is a data scientist, all because of her love of Pandas. Like I will use SQL all day and scoff at Pandas users, not because I completely hate it, just because I think it's almost hilarious how bifurcated it is in terms of usage. And honestly, SQL to me is just the language of data. When I need to do some sort of complex, you know, 100 line query, I don't, I don't wanna know what that looks like in Pandas. I can only imagine it would look crazy and it would require so many calls to so many functions, people would assume it must be a crazy X. What's great is we do live in a world where Spark and Databricks exist, so we can kind of all play in the same world and utilize similar engines. But personally, to me, SQL will remain the language of data. I mean, it's really standed the test of time. We had so many people try to develop some sort of other SQL. I mean, Google itself tried to develop its own special version of SQL for BigQuery, and within a few years, they realized that was the worst idea in the world, and they eventually switched to more standard SQL conventions. I see you, Google engineers. Don't take away my sweet, sweet SQL. Which I know some people hate the fact that I say SQL and not SQL. I'm sorry, to me, it's potato and potato. But honestly, literature and English used to be probably my worst grades. So maybe I'm just really bad at speaking. So those were three reasons why you should consider becoming a data engineer and not a data scientist. If these points resonated with you, maybe you should consider being a data engineer. And if you're a recovering data scientist, I'd love for you to share below kind of what was the moment it eventually clicked that you were a data engineer and not a data scientist. Thanks to everyone who has watched until the end. I will see you guys next time and goodbye.